Yes? There is nothing more I can teach you. It is the way of the Ichani to be able to read their opponents, to know where an opponent is going to strike before it connects, anticipate it, and then strike against them. Ichani battles are fought several minutes in advance. In many ways, it is much like the game of Dejarik, played in the core systems. The most advanced among the Ichani are able to predict the course of battles by months, and the most revered are said to be able to predict the path of wars. Only Revan ever demonstrated such skill in war, and even as he slaughtered us, the Ichani still respected him. You are already doing it. If you do not know you are doing it, then training will make you a dangerous opponent indeed. Come, as we fight more, I will teach you. Do not think about predicting my movements. React instinctively. You are doing better. At first I was afraid that your awareness of your own ability might ruin it, but that is not the case. You learn quickly. Perhaps it is your connection to the Force that allows such things, but I do not think so. Now you fight as an Ichani warrior fights, always in the future.
It has been some time. The years have not been kind to us both, it seems. But perhaps now they will see the truth at last. It is not as it was. But perhaps that is for the best. We were wondering when you would arrive. This moment has taken some time to reach us, and I imagine you have many questions. Or perhaps you've come for revenge. You already know the answer. You've noticed it in those who travel with you. Have you noticed that when you act, others follow? Those that travel with you? They follow you, without question, without hesitation. Against their instincts, and sometimes against their sense. It is because you are a leader. But that still fails to grasp the meaning of what I'm trying to tell you. It is not an easy thing to explain. Surely you are familiar with force bonds. It is the bond that develops between apprentice and master when one truly understands another. It is developed over time through understanding of each other. And yet you do it so easily and we do not know why. You make connections through the force and it resonates with those who travel with you. The resonance is even greater when they too are force sensitive. Your actions affect others more than you know. You draw others to you, especially those strong in the Force. When you suffer, their spirit echoes it. And when they are in pain, their pain becomes yours. We do not know, but it is not the first time you felt the weight of so many lives. And that is why the Mandalorian Wars echo within you still. We did not cut you off from the Force. You were merely deafened to it. Because of that last battle of the Mandalorian Wars. The screams of countless thousands, Jedi and Mandalorians, crushed by the planet's gravity, annihilated. Their lives still scream across the surface of that dead planet, and within you. To hear the Force over such pain, it is not possible. It was too much for any Jedi to endure. And it is a wonder that you did not die there when thousands perished. All those you had fought with and struggled with. You cut yourself off because you had to if you were to survive. You had hints of it in the war on Doxon. Malachor was simply the final blow. You were deafened. At last, you could hear. You were broken. You were whole. You were blinded. And at last, you saw. When you returned to us, we saw what had happened. You carry all those deaths at Malachor within you. And it has left a hole, a hunger that cannot be filled. In you, we saw a wound in the Force. In you, we saw the end of the Force. Yes. You can feel the Force, but you cannot feel yourself. You are a cipher, forming bonds, leeching the life of others, siphoning their will and dominating them. It is the teaching of these new Sith to feed on others, on other Force sensitives. They are symptomatic of the wound in the Force. You are a breach that must be closed. You transmit your pain, your suffering through the Force. Within you we see something worse than merely the teachings of the Sith. What you carry may mean the death of the Force, and the death of the Jedi. So you think. It is not the strength of a Jedi you feel. He's right. It's all the death you've caused to get here. You feed on it, and you grow stronger. You're like Malachor. It's in you, it's what you are now. 
You must have noticed as you fought across all these planets, killing hundreds, only to become more and more powerful. Why do you think that was? But what's worse is that bonding you have. It hasn't gone away. It's gotten stronger. And the more attachments you form, the more you draw others to you. And that is why you are a threat to us all. What if other Jedi went to war as you did, suffered the same events and emerged as you did? What if there was a crucible that trained such Jedi to consume and kill? For you, Malachor was that crucible. What's worse is the Sith that we face. I fear that they have learned the lesson of Malachor all too well. It is what allows them to prey on Force users, to become stronger when Force sensitives are near. Somehow they have learned their hunger from you. And so you have brought about the end of the Jedi, and perhaps all the knowledge of the Force. But it is of no consequence. Your ability to make such connections, such bonds, so easily are why you cannot remain. You are a threat to living creatures and all who feel the Force. You will lead the Sith here, and that we cannot allow. Our judgment before remains. Exile. You must leave. And you must leave without your tie to the Force. It is a punishment reserved for only a few, and only when necessary. But we have the power to cut you off from the Force, and it must be done. Forgive us, but it is necessary. Do not be afraid. You shall feel no pain, but this must be done. As long as you feel the Force, you are a danger to those around you. Enough! Step away from him. What? Step away! He has brought truth, and you condemn it? The arrogance! You will not harm him. You will not harm him ever again. I thought you had died in the Mandalorian Wars. Die? No. Became stronger. Yes. Is this your new master, Exile? If so, then you follow Revan's path. Her teachings will cause you to fall as surely as he did. Sit out, and now they have come to us. As you would pass judgment on him, I have come to pass judgment on you all. Do you wish to feel the teachings born of the Mandalorian Wars? Of all wars, of all tragedies that scream across the galaxy? Let me show you, you who have forever seen the galaxy through the Force. See it through the eyes of the Exile. How could you ever hope to know the threat you face, when you have never walked in the dark places of the galaxy, faced war and death on such a scale? If you had traveled far enough, rather than waiting for the Echo to reach you, perhaps you would have seen it for what it was. There is a place in the galaxy where the dark side of the Force runs strong. It is something of the Sith, but it was fueled by war. It corrupts all that walks on its surface, drowns them in the power of the dark side. It corrupts all life, and it feeds on death. Revan knew the power of such places, and the power in making them. They can be used to break the will of others, of Jedi, promising them power and turning them to the dark side. Did you never wonder how Revan corrupted so many of the Jedi, so much of the Republic, so quickly? The Mandalorian Wars were a series of massacres that masked another war, a war of conversion, culminating in a final atrocity that no Jedi could walk away from, save one. And that is what I sought to understand. How one could turn away from such power, give up the Force, and still live. But I see what happened now. It is because you were... afraid. It is done. He is no more. Take me to Atris. She will have the strength to do what the Council cannot.
took her. She thinks Kreia killed you. Because that's the lie Kreia told her, that's why. The only thing that matters is the Handmaiden believes it. And she's gonna react exactly how that old witch hoped she would. That's why she wanted the Handmaiden on board, you know. So she could use her to reach the Telos Academy whenever she wished, without needing the access codes. She would. If she thought she was bringing Atris a prisoner, especially a Sith Lord, she'll take her to Telos, and Atris will do what she'll do to anyone she thinks is a Sith. Yeah, I know. That's what I was afraid you'd say. <laughs> <laughs> 